Have you ever questioned what separates man from other animals? Well, it's self-consciousness. Man has the ability to bring his own mode of being as a subject and an object of his own thought. So how is this related to religion? This is where Ludwig A. Feuerbach comes in. Ludwig Andres Feuerbach was born in a Lutheran family in 1804. He studied theology at the University of Heidelberg, but soon after transferred to philosophy and moved to the University of Berlin, where he became a student of Hegel. He then received his doctorate degree at the University of Erlangen. His first book, Thoughts on Death and Morality, was anonymously published in 1830. Here, he attacked the concept of personal immorality and proposed the type of immorality by which human qualities are reabsorbed into nature. His most important work is The Essence of Christianity, written in 1841. Feuerbach posited the notion that man is to himself his own object of thought and that religion is nothing more than the consciousness of the infinite. In his book, he wrote that Christian religion has projected and thus displaced qualities of human consciousness on sacred objects, and by doing so, it has misrepresented the true essence of religion and the fundamental reality of human nature and human consciousness. In this reflection, Feuerbach heavily attacked religion and current dogmas of that time. He also said that man essentially thought of a being such as God to create an avenue to convert qualities of human nature into the qualities of another being external to man. In this, the personality of God is nothing else than the projected personality of man. Although Feuerbach denied that he was an atheist, he nevertheless contended that the God of Christianity is an illusion. As he expanded his discussion to other disciplines, including philosophy, he came to see Hegel's principles as quasi-religious and embraced instead a form of materialism that Marx subsequently criticized in his thesis on Feuerbach, written in 1845. In addition to his previous work and the conclusion he made regarding man's projection of thought, Feuerbach had four defining conclusions regarding the essence of human nature. The first being that man's self-consciousness is the trait that separates man from other animals. Second, that the most apparent qualities of man is being are man's experience of reason, will, and love, because these qualities are desired by rational beings in themselves. Third, that these qualities are defined as the perfection of man because attaining them means fulfilling the essence and nature of our species. And lastly, that human beings have certain limitations that sometimes prevent them from attaining these qualities. In this, he said that the essence of human nature is that we as humans are aware of our surroundings and ourselves, and that we desire the use and feeling of reason, will, and love, given that these are what a rational being and what the most perfect of man would also desire and that man being a human being possesses limitations that prevent us from doing all of these. These are what defines Feuerbach's claims that leads to his central thesis, that God is only a projection of human nature without limits, one that fully contains the qualities of reason, will, and love without imperfection. This is what is known as the theory of projection. He claims that our conceptions of God are always just projections of our own values and the qualities that we uphold, and thus God fulfills our need to objectify our virtues. Thus, the essence of religion is human nature, and that when we worship God, we're really just worshiping our own virtues and our concept of God, which only represents our delight in ourselves, our feeling of power and self-fulfillment. Now this sounds a bit selfish and egocentric, but hey, aren't we? Feuerbach's answer to this dilemma of who God is is that God is only a projection of positive attributes of human nature because that is what humans want. He highlights the term deep-seated wishes, which are the foundation of his projection theory, which explains that God is nothing but the fulfillment of our inner and most central desires. This was later explained by Sigmund Freud, who is one of Feuerbach's greatest disciples. He states that religious ideas that have been given out as teachings are merely illusions, fulfillments of the oldest, strongest, and most urgent wishes of mankind. However, there are also difficulties with this emotive foundation for projection. First is its misunderstanding of religion, since many religions, including Christianity, do not run as one would wish for. For instance, it is difficult to see how humans could wish for being guilty before a holy and wrathful God, or having to surrender one's self-interest for the sake of God's own glory. 
Second, even if in some strange way humans wished for this self-denial and sacrificial obedience to God, would this prove that God does not exist? Lastly, it is to note that not all humans want God to exist. For example, atheism and its followers could equally be guilty of following their deep-seated wishes by having God not exist and interfere with their lives. Thus, it seems just as likely that God exists, as it does that one does not according to Feuerbach's theory, which leaves the argument inconclusive. Feuerbach's work ultimately had a sense of reductionism in that in his conclusions, we can see that religion is reduced to anthropology. Anthropology is the study of human beings and their ancestors through time and space and in relation to physical character, environmental, and social relations and culture. According to Feuerbach's philosophy, religion was created in fulfillment of humanity's needs and wishes, thus reducing religion to anthropology. According to him, God's existence heavily relies on the existence of man and his desires. He is reduced to man's projection of himself into something greater outside himself. Feuerbach's work makes an ultimate turn to atheism because of the point he has raised that aim to prove that God doesn't exist in the real world. He comes to this point after his reflection on love that led him to conclude that God is simply a projection of everything that humanity loves about itself. The positive traits, attitudes, and morals that are held in high regard. In fact, the worship of God is simply the worship of the values that the worshiper holds sacred. He concluded that God has renounced himself out of love, so we out of love should renounce God. For if we do not sacrifice God to love, we sacrifice love to God. And in spite of the predicate of love, we have the God, the evil being of religious fanaticism. Here, he suggests that the love for humanity should trump the idea of God since there is a danger to look at God as the sole source of love with the humans not being capable of it on their own. With this turn to atheism, Feuerbach wishes to transform friends of God into friends of man, believers into thinkers, devotees of prayer into devotees of work, candidates for the hereafter into the students of the world. Christians who, by their own possession and admission, are half animal and half angel into persons, into whole persons. Ultimately, he believed that reason cannot constitute itself as an object of sense. He states that I cannot, in thinking, at the same time represent what I think as a sensible object external to me. The proof of the existence of God transcends the limits of this reason, truth in the same sense in which sight, hearing, smelling transcends the limits of the reason. It is absurd to reproach reason that it does not satisfy a demand which can only address itself to the senses. This explains that we cannot prove the existence of God through reason, since God is rather something that would have external existence. The extension of this is that if God is not a truth but rather an entity that exists, then he has no effect but a motivation one on human morality, that is, he only affects us to the extent to which we imagine him. Thus, for Feuerbach, God exists only in the imagination, which can be somewhat compared to a placebo effect, where everything is in the mind. Ultimately, it can be seen that Feuerbach is arguing against the existence of God in the real world, but he accepts the existence of God only in imagination. A very controversial stance that proves relevance even until today in the age of what appears to be the modern day enlightenment. At the time, Christianity was the state's religion which made it all more controversial. At the time these amazing thought systems were growing, there seemed to be a growing radicalization of religion where Feuerbach was one of its first proponents. Feuerbach saw religion as an emergence from the feeling of dependence in his work, Feuerbach grew critical of this dependence by declaring religion the fantasy that was the people's attempt at wish fulfillment. He believed that man desires for godlike powers, but since he is not capable of these powers, he creates a god that is almighty and powerful instead. As an argument to religion, Feuerbach believed that practical men, however, turned to science and technology, which are able to satisfy the real needs of men. This can be understood in the context of the Industrial Revolution, where science and technology boomed since Feuerbach grew up in during this time. 
This is in line with his work, which advocated for materialism as he understood everything including mental aspects and consciousness as the result of material interaction and thus explains his ultimate turn to atheism. Ultimately, his work stayed relevant because of his strong influence on other philosophers such as Karl Marx, Friedrich Engels, and on the other proponents of atheism today as well. Today we have learned about the essence of human nature and its four building blocks according to Feuerbach, self-consciousness, human qualities, what makes the perfect man, and man's limitations. We have also learned about Feuerbach's theory of projection, how man created God as a solution to their deep-seated wishes, resulting in reductionist view, and how Feuerbach made an ultimate turn to atheism. This episode was brought to you by the students of Father Kenneth Massa on Lovatinea's philosophy department. We would like to thank the members who each contributed in their own ways. Tune in for the next episode.